she felt like doing her part to change the world. So she started by giving thanks for all the blessings in her life, rather than bemoaning all that was missing from it. Then she complimented her reflection in the mirror instead of criticizing it as she usually did. Next, she walked in her neighborhood and offered her smile to everyone she passed, whether or not they offered theirs to her. Each day, she did these things, and soon they became habit. Each day, she lived with more gratitude, more acceptance, more kindness, and sure enough, the world around her began to change because she had decided so. She had single-handedly doing her part to change it. Scott Sable. Hi, I'm Jessica Disbro, licensed social worker and registered psychotherapist in the state of Colorado. I'm also the founder and primary therapist of Higher Consciousness Healing. We offer empowering and holistic psychotherapy services to youth and adults in Lakewood, Colorado. For more information about our practice, please visit us on the web at www.higherconsciousnesshealing.org. You're watching our live video blog. Thanks for joining us. We air this every Saturday at 10 a.m. Mountain Time. We talk about different mental health topics from a spiritual and scientific perspective. And today, we're talking about the stages of change, creating better habits. Now, I'm really excited to talk to you all about this today because it's something that I've talked to so many of my clients about over the years, and I think it's really vital for any change that we want to make. Now, I really want to press that if you have any questions or comments during the show, please feel free to ask them. And also, at the end, I'd love to get your feedback about what has made change hard for you. So we'll cover that at the end. All right, so what is the stages of change? Well, it's a model that was developed by researchers in the late 70s. And they were studying smokers to try and figure out what was it that made some smokers able to quit while others had to remain in treatment and get more support? So what was it? Well, they found, ironically, that people were ready to quit when they were ready to quit. So basically, they decided to create a model for counselors to get their clients ready to quit, ready for change. So they you know, researched and found these different categories of just general patterns that we go through as we're trying to make a change. And it's just really helpful. Before we get into that, though, I just want to talk for a second about why it's hard to make change and just admit that change is really hard. And even just trying to do something as simple as remembering to take a daily vitamin can be a struggle for some people. So the reason why that is is like I've said in, in other shows, and I'm sure you've heard it, what fires together wires together in the brain. The more repetitive the action, the more it cements into our neural pathways, and the harder it is to change. Because basically what that means is we're kind of losing an aspect of control that we normally have because our brain is just kind of firing based on these patterns and we don't have that level of control anymore. So that's why it's really hard to change and it's especially hard for addictions like alcohol. So remember that the first time you do something, it's always gonna be the hardest because you've never done it before. And especially if you're trying to undo a really ingrained pattern, that first time is going to feel really hard. So just be prepared for that. It might even feel impossible, but it's just a feeling. I really assure you, you have a lot more power and control than you think you do. So it's really about just mustering up the courage and empowering yourself to really make the change that you need to. All right. So what are the stages of change? 
There's six of them technically, although most people just use five, but we're going to cover all six today. And I took this that I'm reading from, from the Boston University School of Public Health. And I'm going to link this resource also in the wall feed so you all can have it as well. All right. So as I'm going through the different stages, I'm going to be using smoking as an example because I think it's just a really clean and easy one for people to understand and kind of wrap their head around. So the first stage is pre-contemplation. And in this stage, people don't realize they have a problem, right? So in the case of smoking, maybe they're young, their parents smoke, their friends smoke. It's just kind of in the culture and it seems really normalized and they don't really think it's a problem. You know, they've heard if you quit before you're 30, your lungs will recover, you won't get cancer. It's not really a big deal, you know? Well, people are unaware that their behavior is problematic and it's actually producing negative consequences. You know, just because everyone around you smokes doesn't make it okay. It actually makes it even worse because it's really saying something about the people that you're around and the kind of culture you're being brought up in, you know, because smoking is unhealthy and it is a coping mechanism for stress. And we can find other ways to deal with stress that are much healthier. So I don't understand what the pros and cons are. Now, let's say they find out that one of their parents actually gets diagnosed with lung cancer. And they're like, whoa, man, you know, I've been smoking for almost 10 years now, you know, since I was 15. And maybe this isn't so good. You know, I hear cancer doesn't really care how much you smoke. You know, it's the fact that you're smoking. So now they're kind of contemplating. Contemplation is the next stage. So they're contemplating that the healthy behavior might be a better choice and they're seeing that it's actually a really bad idea to keep smoking and how problematic it could be for their future. And they're really feeling for their, their parent. So number three, they move into preparation or the determination stage. So they've decided they're going to quit Absolutely, they just need some time to prepare. And people can find different ways that work for them depending on your style. Some people can quit cold turkey. Some people need like the patch or other things that need to be in place before they can actually quit. So whatever change that you're trying to modify or whatever behavior, that preparation stage is just, I can't stress enough, absolutely vital. So make a plan, write it down, give yourself a timeline. I'm going to quit in 30 days and I'm going to put these things in place so I can be prepared to lead a healthier lifestyle. And then number four, the action stage. And this is where people have prepared. Now the 30 days is over. They're off the patch now. They're totally nicotine free and they're feeling good. You know, and the first time we make a change like this, where we really dedicate ourselves, it's going to be, there's a certain magic to it because you've never done it before and you're taking action, you're taking power and control over yourself and your life. And you're like, yeah, I can do this. <laughs> so it's really empowering. And then number five, we move into the maintenance stage. Now maintenance means that you've been able to maintain the behavior for six months. So you're basically in that action stage for six months, doing all of the things you need to do over and over again every day without relapsing. So if you do relapse, it's totally okay. All that needs to happen is you go back through one of those stages. Some people go back to action right away. 
Some people go back to pre-contemplation. It really wasn't that big of a problem. I don't really need to change. Like, I'm still young. You know, my parents are old. So, I mean, it's just a different situation. You know, they start to make excuses for their behavior again. So it depends on, it depends on you. But that maintenance stage really doesn't happen until six months after the behavior has been repeated and that action steps have been taken. And I know there's a lot of people who say that you can build a habit in 28 days. Yes, you can start to build a habit in 28 days, but really it's six months. And that's why things are so hard, because when you think about it, that's a long period of time. All right. The last stage is termination. And this is when the state when people have no desire at all to return to the unhealthy behavior. Now, this is a stage that people don't talk about a lot because termination is not something that is easy for most people. And so setting you up to say, oh, you'll you'll be able to never want another cigarette again. That's not really realistic. Some people that might be true, but for most people, it's probably not going to be. So just keep that in mind. You know, you still may want whatever thing you're trying to cut out of your life, and that's okay. Now, the relapse stage is not on here. And that's because it doesn't really, I mean, it belongs in the stages of change, but it kind of belongs outside of the diagram, which I'll post after this episode is over. And I think relapse is actually really great. And I know that that's not something that mental health professionals tell people, tell anyone, it's just me telling, telling you all, because relapse is a vital learning tool for you. Now, if you relapse, it's completely okay. It's really okay. All that means is that you're going back and forth about whatever the decision is, and that's totally normal. So relapse can help teach us why we're not wanting to do that behavior in the first place, because we get a taste of it again, and we're like, oh, I don't think I want to do that anymore. I'm really over that. I'm really past it. And so it can be really great. However, it can go the other way and turn into what we call like full-blown relapse, which is where you're, again, denying the behavior is a problem and you really like sunk yourself down um, into that rabbit hole again. And that's not a good place to be. So if you relapse, just use it productively and get yourself back on track and you'll actually be more determined to quit or change whatever habit it is because you relapsed and now you kind of get an idea of what that's like. So it can be a really beneficial thing. All right. I don't see any questions or comments so far and we're about wrapping up. I do want to make a comment that we can be addicted to pretty much anything, including people and relationships. And that's where it gets really tricky. So next week I'm going to be talking about redefining addiction and addictive behaviors because I have done some research on this area and I've been working in the field with addictions and I do have a new perspective with current research that I think is really valuable and also going back to the brain and how addiction is actually working in the brain it's just a very different opinion than some of the mental health people, professionals, and people working in addiction with the peer-led model. So we're going to talk about that next week. I will be gone on vacation, so it will be a pre-recorded show, but I would still love to hear your comments and questions in the feed box, so please make sure to leave them there. And I don't see any questions and I did ask if you want to share, and I know that it's, it's public, and I understand that people might not want to put themselves out there, and that's totally fine. You can just do this at home, but think about what's made it hard for you to change. I think identifying obstacles is really important when we're talking about making any kind of change. 
And it's really important to go through that while you're evaluating and thinking about the change you want to make and how you can make it. Identifying obstacles is key. I also have a book recommendation. It's called Better Than Before by Gretchen Rubin. It's about mastering the habits of everyday life. I think it's a really great, easy read. If you're interested in changing some of your daily habits, that would be a great place to start. All right, I don't see any comments, but that's okay. I hope you've had fun watching at home and that this has been valuable for you. As always, if you want to leave comments, leave comments. And if you like this video, please like and share with your friends and family on Facebook and through YouTube. We love the spread the word about these important things that we're all going through. You know, because it's not just some people who are struggling. I feel there are so many people struggling right now. And we can make a difference by making a difference in ourselves, which makes a difference in the people around us just by being a good influence. All right. Thanks, everybody, and take care.